Hello guys, Elmaxo here and welcome to another video. So, SFS is a pretty complicated game and to some players, especially the new ones, it can be really difficult at times. So here is the SFS 1.4 full tutorial. A disclaimer, this video only covers the base game and doesn't cover planet editing or BP editing. So, let's start with the title screen. When you start the game, you have multiple options. The exit and the credits buttons aren't particularly interesting. While the tutorial button will explain you some things, it won't go into too much detail. The settings button, however, is something you should definitely check out. You will see the game settings, music, sound, screen rotation, FPS and the cheat settings. While sound, screen rotation and FPS are personal preference, the music button doesn't do anything, since there is no music in SFS 1.4. Still, it is recommended to turn music off to the reduced possible lag. Moving on, we are catapulted into the building mode. Here you will spend a lot of time building your crazy inventions, but there are some rules. Depending on the part, some sides attach and some don't. For example, while a structure piece attaches on all four sides, the small battery only attaches on two. This can be useful when, for example, building a compact piston. However, there is way more parts which have unique attachment and hitboxes, like the capsule, the parachutes, the size separator, the engines, the docking ports, RCS, aerodynamics, small batteries, solar panels, and wheels. You will need to keep this in mind while building. But attaching multiple parts to form an object is just part of the work. When building a spacecraft, you need to attach all functional parts like engines, RCS and wheels in a way that allows them to work. For that again, there is rules. For example, engines and fuel tanks have faces, which connect fuel while their signs don't. This allows you to connect two tanks that are next to each other or divide them, for example, automatic staging. But there is more. When using wheels or iron engines, you will need electricity. Unlike fuel tanks, batteries storing electric power don't need to be attached to each other to become a big battery. As long as the batteries are connected to the same craft, their capacities add up, meaning one spacecraft has one electric energy bar, which represents the electric power status of all the batteries. When spawning your creation, the small and medium batteries will always have a charge of 50%, while the big batteries will have a charge of 100%. What also makes electricity unique is that you can produce it, making it an infinite resource. There is multiple ways of producing energy. You either use solar panels, which are light but only produce little energy and only when extended, or you choose the RTG, which is compact and works all the time but is rather slow. But there is even more special parts used for special tasks. Every object needs at least one probe or capsule to be controllable. They can also spin the whole craft. The more capsules or probes there are, the better your craft spins. The parachutes can be opened while in the atmosphere of a planet. They are used to slow down crafts without using fuel and can be opened by tapping in an atmosphere below 2500 meters with a speed of less than 250 meters per second. At 500 meters altitude, they can be opened fully to reduce the speed even more. They will open fully automatically on 100 meters altitude. Fuel tanks adapt to other fuel tanks. The bigger tank will always adapt to the smaller, creating an adapter without decreasing its capacity. All fuel based engines can be turned on or off by tapping and be throttled with the throttle bar. While turning, they will turn too to increase the turning speed. Their face needs to be attached to the face of a fuel tank to work. Iron engines need electricity and fuel and can be placed anywhere on the craft, but even with a very high efficiency at the cost of very low thrust, they can't turn. Separators can be activated by tapping and will irreversibly disconnect the part the arrow is pointing at. If they are placed underneath a fuel tank, capsule or a probe, another separator or an aerodynamic cone within 3.5 meters or 7 squares, they will create a fairing which you can put things inside of, like an engine. 
The side separator, however, will disconnect in its middle, leaving one half of itself on the main craft and the other on the separated one. Landing legs can be retracted or extended without any fuel or electric energy. While most parts can only withstand an impact speed of circa 4 meters per second, the landing legs can handle around 7.5 meters per second. While wheels are used for driving on the surface of planets, they need electricity and can only move a certain amount of weight. The small wheel can move roughly 40 tons, the big wheel 60 tons. Locking ports are used to connect two crafts to one another. Once their faces touch, they connect automatically. To detach, you simply press either docking port. All sizes of docking ports can dock with each other. They have a magnetic force, however it is too weak to be useful. RCS is a set of directional thrusters. They are neither efficient nor powerful, but they will allow you to strafe in any direction or rotate. They are mostly used for docking. Now that you know what each part does, it's time to build your first rocket. You will notice that there is something called thrust weight at the bottom of your screen. This is the ratio comparing how much your engine can lift to how much your rocket weighs. The game will calculate it with all the engines that do not have anything attached to their bottom. For Earth takeoff, the best TVR is 1.5. But TVR is not everything. Your rocket will need to have stages in order to be more efficient and reach space more easily. Since your rocket is heaviest at liftoff, you need high thrust, low efficiency engines at the first stage of your rocket, like the Hawk engine or the Titan engine. The next stages should have half or a third of the mass of the previous stage with decreasing thrust and increasing efficiency. Once you have built your ship, you can press play and start flying. To turn on the engines, you have to tap each engine individually. Note that the engines will not ignite when the throttle is at 0% or off. To take off, first turn on all the engines of the first stage, set throttle to 100% and turn throttle on. Fly straight until you reach 4000 meters, then turn your craft by 15 degrees. Here we go. At 7000 meters by 30 degrees. At 10,000 meters by 45 degrees. If the stage burns up and uses its fuel in the process, detach it and turn on the next stage. Continue this until you have an apoapsis of 35 kilometers. You can check your apoapsis by checking the map. Upon reaching 25,000 meters, you will be able to time warp. Time warp to the height of 35,000 meters and start burning in the direction you are flying in until you reach low Earth orbit. The most important orbital maneuvers are the prograde and the retrograde burn. A prograde burn is when you burn in the direction you are flying in, meaning you will increase the orbit height at the opposite side of the orbit. A retrograde burn is when you burn in the opposite direction of the direction you are flying in, resulting in a decrease of orbit height at the opposite side of the orbit. Now you can either stay in orbit or, if you have enough fuel, Go to another celestial body like a moon or a planet. To do that, you zoom out in map view until you can see your destination. Then you tap it and click on set as target. When going to the moon, you only need to look at your own orbit and burn in your moving direction inside the transfer window. When going interplanetaria on the other hand, you need to burn in transfer window of your own orbit and in the orbit of your planet. Docking is a great addition to the game. Once docked, both crafts will be physically connected. They will share energy production and usage and distribute it evenly to all the batteries as if it was one ship. Docking is very useful for reusing rockets. You can transfer fuel from one tank to another by first clicking on the donator and then on the receptor. This will transfer fuel either until the donator is empty or the receptor is full. In this tutorial I will be covering two ways of docking. The first, slow one, 
is matching both orbits exactly and time warping until they meet. Upon being close, you activate your RCS and dock your crafts together. The second one only works if your target has a higher orbit and is orbiting in the same direction but is way fast. You draw an imaginary line from the center of the planet or moon you're orbiting around to your craft. When the line reaches your craft it makes a 90 degree turn in your orbit's direction. This is your imaginary crosshair. When your target is on that line you start burning prograde until you close approach gets to 50 to 150 meters. Time warp carefully until you are 1.5 kilometers away from your target. Exit map view and zoom out just far enough to still see your craft and start looking out for your target. You will see that your targets will move quickly over your screen. This is when you start burning prograde at 100% throttle until your target moves slower and slower relative to you. Just like with the first method, you now simply use your RCS to dock.